Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Um, I'm pretty new to making these kind of videos and I'm hoping to put up more as things come along but I want to show anybody that owns a DC Designs F14 how to use it properly uh, as far as autopilot goes. Just kind of a brief tutorial. They, they haven't released anything with DC Designs that um, gives you any instructions and I had to figure things out a little bit and it was trickier than expected so anyways here we go this is the one I'll be using just the F14A and weight and balance I got everything just default I didn't change any of that weather I made my own preset so there's the the IMC one that's by default that's good enough if you want to try that for bad weather I made mine so it's a little bit lower clouds uh, closer to the ground and more coverage so and I, I cranked up the aerosol density and all that stuff so that's all done so we'll go into Halifax we'll set it as our departure I'm just gonna go from the runway so a disclaimer this is on PC uh, I don't know if this will work the same on the Xbox and uh, also I'm not starting up the plane from cold and dark I'm starting it right on the runway so if there's a switch that gets missed and or something like that, I don't know the actual startup procedure for this this DC Designs F14 or the real F14 for that matter. Um, so we're just going to go with it from there. And if you uh, find any benefit from this, bonus. We'll we'll see what we can do. So here we are. We're in Halifax, Nova Scotia. This is in Canada. Uh, really crappy weather. The airport code is CYHZ, and we are on runway 32. Um, so, there's the plane, as you can see. Ready to take off. We're on the runway. I wish it would, st would spawn you right on the taxiway there at the hold short instead of directly on the runway, but this is fine for, for all purposes that we'll be doing. So, I didn't touch any buttons right now. All I'm going to do is, because we got some sip outside I'm gonna make sure that I can find the icing where is that at oh there engine the engine probe anti-ice I'm putting that to auto everything else is good for now I think okay so that's the only switch I touched I'm getting rid of that joystick just so we can see more here and we're gonna take off I did not set a flight plan or anything and we're going to get above the clouds, and once we do, we're going to figure out how we're going to get back down. All right. So, on my joystick, I have a, a setup to move the heading bug, as you can see what I'm doing here. And that's on my joystick. However, if you look down here, this knob will do the same thing if you need to change your heading. Okay? But I have nothing set right now other than that, that uh, ice switch. So, releasing the brakes and off we go. I'm gonna advance the power just to military power. I think that's what it's called. See where it says thrust and it went to mill right there. Off we go. I think that's max power right before after burners. Try to maintain some center line here. We should have a good crosswind when we come in later. But who cares, just a sim, just for fun. V1 rotate, positive rate. Gear up, maintain about 10 degrees till we get nice speed and clearance from everything. Altitude still climbing. a little too much there we go there's still our 10 degrees all right fine full afterburner let's get out of here fast we get up high what I like about this plane is that you can manually do the flaps or let it do its thing automatically and the auto flaps are really cool you don't have to mess with anything and it sets it all up you know it's just kind of a neat feature I'm not going to complain about that not sure what altitude will break out at, so we'll just steepen our climb a bit. 
Hopefully everybody can hear me. I'm trying a different mic setup. I made a video tutorial already of this before and um, the microphone was really low. I just used my webcam mic and quality wasn't that good. So I'm going to try this way and see if it gets any better. Our nose is lowering. That's because our speed's dropping. That's fine. Through 10,000 feet. I am going to now set the heading bug to a heading of uh, roughly 050. It's, uh, it's opposite of the runway we're going to land on because we're going to land on runway 23. So once we start setting things up with the autopilot, that'll make it easier for us. I'm going to roll out on that heading right now. Oh, there we go. There's the cloud surf or cloud tops. <laughs> All right, so we'll go to that heading, then we'll turn on the autopilot. I'll show you a, a brief way to do that. Reducing the speed now just to, you know, probably half thrust or something. As you'll see, I don't know the F-14. I've never studied it, so this is all just me messing around, having fun. Um, I am a real pilot in real life. I've flown... Beach 1900D airliner for a few years and I've got lots of real world experience but never in a fighter jet <laughs> okay so here we go um, we'll level off here they say in DC designs in the um, in the PDF file that you get to read the documents if you can get it so you can fly hands-free before you engage the autopilot it'll give you a much better uh, uh, outcome so you have to have these three switches up. They're already up. I'm going to turn on my altitude and my heading and then engage the autopilot. Those three buttons. One, two, three. So right now that has my heading following the bug. The altitude, when I clicked that, we were at 16.3 and it saved it as 16.3. On my joystick, I have another button to increase or decrease that number. It's just the heading, or sorry, the altitude bug. I'm going to decrease it to 15,000. We'll keep it even. Well, an odd thousand, but an even number. And uh, if you need to adjust that without having a, a bug set up, the dial is right here. So I can change it down here as well. Okay. So that's set. Our heading set. We're going away from the field. I'm going to bring the power back a little more. I think I bumped it up a bit much. We're going to set up auto throttle. So you turn this button over here to auto. That puts your auto throttle to whatever number set here. 308 is currently set. That's too high, so I'm going to drop that down to... I'm just going to say 200 for now. We can change that later. So I'm using my mouse wheel on the switch over here to do it. And that'll just reserve a 200 knot setting when we turn that switch on later. So watch. Get 200 knots. And you see it in the window up here. Oh, didn't mean to get that going. There's the 200 knots. I'm going to turn my auto throttle off again. So if I wanted to crank the afterburners or keep my speed up, I can do that. But later when I want to not think about it and do the approach, I just click this to auto and it starts slowing down to 200 knots or whatever you have set there. Okay, so just remember that switch for when you need it. Um, all right, so we're on the autopilot. It's doing our heading, which they call track select here, which I guess is just the DC designs way. It could be the real F-14, I'm not sure. I do know this is more just designed for, for the simulator and having fun, so, so okay. Alright, so it's cool. What we need now is we need to set up a flight plan. We don't have one set up, and uh, what I've done is I've had another plane by Carinado, it's the Seneca, and I had some problems with the GPS and I contacted support. They recommended that I download this uh, PMS uh, 750, uh, GTN 750. So I got it, and it's amazing. It's integrated right in with the Carinado plane if you want to use it. However, um, it also creates this little widget up here, and you can use it with any plane. So this is how I set up my flight plan in this aircraft where there's no FMS inside to do it. So I'll click on flight plan. you got to set an origin airport. I will go from DeBert, Nova Scotia, which is CCQ3. Give it a second. Uh, it didn't register. We'll go back in a second and try three again. Did that work? No. 
Cancel. Let's try one more time. C C Q three. This normally isn't doesn't have bugs. It works great. I love it. You have to it ha it has duplicate waypoints in my database because I got some add-on scenery, and uh, so I'll pick C C Q three again. Set destination. Halifax C Y H Z. Enter, and I'll pick Halifax again. And there's my flight plan. If we look at our map, we'll see where we are from that route. So there's Debert, there's the airport, and because we're using our heading bug, I'm going to turn the plane around, and we will roughly head back towards the field. So that's what it's doing now. All I did was was basically change my track or heading bug with uh, the buttons on my joystick. However, like I say, you can use this button here to do it, and that'll still move it. This is version 1.0.1. .1. If you have the earlier version of the Tomcat, which is 1.0.0, .0, that heading bug doesn't work every time. It's it's tricky. You got to be in the perfect mode. But uh, since they changed it and upgraded the version to 1.0.1, .1, um, it works now pretty good. That's my speed. Speed slowed down quite a bit because I did let off the throttle. I can increase that a tad. And we'll use a 200 knot auto throttle in a little while. I do find sometimes the autopilot's a little bit laggy and wonky, but it works. It's, it's still good. So, all right, we set up our flight plan. Let's load in an approach. So we're going to do the ILS-23 in Halifax, which I use an app on my phone called Flight Plan Go. And in that app, you have all the approach plates. I'll try to put this approach plate up on the screen um, after I'm done making this video. And we are going to come in hopefully via Leros. So, not always when you load in approaches in Flight Sim, in the real world you could, but in Flight Sim, um, for some reason, it doesn't always let you go to the IF, which is the intermediate fix. It's the middle of the T in a lot of these approaches. The, the IAF is the initial approach fix, and that's usually on the both sides of the T. So let's see here. What am I doing? Procedure. Approach. ILS-23. And there, there would be the IAF, and this is the IF. Leros is what I want because it's just more in my direction and it'll give me more of a straight-in approach. And uh, it's now set up via Dutier. We're going to change that. Leros is available. So I'll select that. Load the approach in. You'll see that um, the way Flight Sim works, I'm actually going to turn my heading to follow that line right now just to keep me closer to the track. Um, the way Flight Sim works, it doesn't really notice a difference between load the approach and, uh, and not. We're quite high and we're close to Leros. I didn't realize actually how close we were, so I'm going to do a 360 and drop our altitude down. So we're going to head back outbound. Roughly heading 050 ish. So I got that set up here. We'll let the plane do its magic. And I'm going to drop our altitude down to uh, 3,000 feet. As you can see, I'm using my bug on my joystick to do it, but you could do it over here. 3,000 feet is set, we'll let the plane drop down, and then I'll reload that approach, and we'll follow it in with the GPS. Frequency for the approach, um, it's funny, it automatically puts it in here, which previous versions wouldn't, but we need 109.90, and that's right here. In real life, you'd also have to hold another frequency, 109.10, for the DME. So I would program that in as well. And there'd be a function to hold that frequency, and that would give you DME information from that other ILS. But this is the one that has the localizer we need to follow. Okay, it's looking good. Following the track out. Once we drop down to a boat, I guess 6,000, we'll start heading back in towards Leros, and that'll give us lots of time to to be at a good, nice level, not too fast. We're doing 600 knots now, and that might be a problem. So let's set up our auto throttle. 
right now to go down to 200 knots. So switch that over to auto and we have 200 knots set here so when our speed drops that'll go down to 200 and we'll be good for our approach. On my joystick I set up a, a button to disconnect the autopilot and I made it in sync with, with not just the disconnect autopilot. You'll see when I hit it, I'm not going to do it right now, but it would disengage this switch and this switch. So I have it set to disengage both. So when I land, the auto throttle shuts off and so does the autopilot you know, right rate before landing. So um, that's something to keep in mind because if you leave this on, you might get on the runway and it just keep wanting to go full afterburners to keep you up to the speed that you set. You can change your range down here. Oh, wrong button. That was my bad. There we go. You can see our track again. It's looking good. But as far as autopilot goes, all I've done so far was turned on the altitude heading and the engage button. And then this auto throttle, which is a whole different system. They can go independent from each other. Like you can have this off, this still on, and your speed will still be done automatically. So. So it's good. And okay, we're getting there. I think since we slow down, I can actually start my turn in a little bit early. So I'm gonna aim us back towards Halifax with the heading bug. I'm gonna give us a new track once we get a little closer. This is a great GPS feature. Um, you can turn it on and off right here. So it's free. There's, they, they have different versions. You can do the paid version where you can get it involved with Navigraph or something like that. Um, but I'm just using the free one and it's absolutely perfect for what I, what I need. And I think that most people will find that. So yeah, definitely check it out. I'll try to put a link in the description of my video here where people can just go download it. And anytime it needs an update, it tells you right on it. It says an update's available, so you just go back to the site, re-download it, put it in your community folder, and done. All right, direct two. What you do is you bring the mouse down to this corner of it to get the direct two. And, oh, I gotta select the waypoint, so hang on. I gotta go back, cancel. Procedure, I'll just activate it again. Or load it. It'll still activate. There we go. Now, to follow the GPS track, what I'm going to do is all I'm going to do is hit this switch here. It's the mode one. It goes from ECM to NAV. And when I switch that up, you see now we have GPS here and LNAV below it. That means it's going to follow this track. Um, we're slowing down. Our speed's going to hover at around 200 knots. We're 3,000 feet. How far are we from Leros? Ah, we're 17 miles. You know what? I'm going to give it some power. So, auto throttle's coming off. I didn't realize I was putting it so far out because when I went outbound, I was doing like 600 knots. <laughs> Oops. So, we can go up to about 300 knots or 400 knots. Just, I think three will do. Then, once again, I'll hit that auto throttle and it'll bring it back to 200 as we get closer. In real life there is a speed restriction at Leros which is 200 knots so that makes sense. 15 miles out I'll wait till we're about I guess 10 back and I'll hit that button. We're over 325 now I'll try to leave it around there. Don't want to go too fast. All right, so all I did to get it to follow the GPS track was first set up the flight plan, but then hit this button here. And once you get GPS LNAV here, it should follow it as long as all this is engaged, right? Your, your uh, autopilot down here, which we didn't touch again. We only did that the one time to turn on our heading and altitude. Okay, there we go. So we are approaching 10 miles I'm going to swap that over 
So I'll hit auto throttle. You'll see this will go down. It'll go down to a target of 200 knots. We might still be coming in fast. It's a video game. It's fine. We'll be okay. So what I do now is I take my, my throttle on my joystick and I crack it just a little bit so that after I disconnect my autopilot and when I land, I can just touch it and that ensures that the throttle goes from wherever auto throttle had it down to idle. Just to activate it. Kind of a, just a sim quirk, but it's there. All right, our speed is slowing down at a, at a pretty good pace. Actually, it's working out pretty good. I'd like to be at 200 knots just before Leros. Uh, five miles out is ideal because I like that's when I like to swap over the ILS. But everything's looking good. We got 200 knots, so this information up here is the same as what's down here. You can turn on landing mode just to give you more information, and you can also turn on this other button down here for vectors. It gives you an autopilot flight director vector. <laughs> that's a lot to say but that's what it's following. So we're, we're within five miles to Leros. I'm gonna switch on the these two ILS switches right here. So one, two, and then the third button I have to switch is where it says nav GPS. Gotta swap that over. I should see localizer, alt, and glide slope under here, meaning it's armed. Usually when you have the box around that, I believe that means armed and then the box disappears. So yeah, see, the box disappeared, now the localizer is captured. And the altitude, that doesn't happen in this plane. I think it's just a, a fault with the DC Designs version. And uh, that glide slope will come up in that box, but it doesn't ever actually, I guess, quote, arm. So everything's looking good. I'm going to get rid of that map. We don't need it now. I just used it before for making sure we were set up for the approach. And you can see all of our information here. We're just at Leros, turning in on the localizer, 200 knots, 3,000 feet. Glide slope is armed. We're showing an arrow, meaning the glide slope's above us, which is what you want. You want the slope to come down and meet you, and then when the system catches it, it'll just follow it down properly. I'm going to start slowing our speed now. Using the dial, I'll go down to 150 knots. Biggest thing I find is you want to keep it stable. Right, I think it was more important that we turned out and got our our speed and altitude under control before we came back in and actually followed the the uh, slope in. Localizer is alive. Flaps are already coming down automatically. I don't need to address that. One dot above. I'm going to hit gear down. Landing gear is coming down. You'll see these this indicate down in a minute. All right. Gear is down. Spoilers in or speed brake is in. That's what that other light means or, or thing, other indication. So next thing we're going to watch for is that our speed stays at 150 or close to it, and that the uh, glide slope goes up into the into the box, and it did. Glide slope's now captured. Loke is captured. We're on a comfortable track going inbound. Everything looks good, and pretty much just monitoring it from here on out. Okay. There's another switch that gets turned on automatic when you use these buttons, and it's this one here. It, uh, it's your direct lift control, and that affects these little spoilers on the wings. And I don't think they're animated here as they should be in real life, but they would come up or down as needed. They give you a little bit extra drag on the approach, so you have, have to use a little more throttle. But they're really quick response um, to control the amount of lift that's on the wings and in real life they make a big difference. They're not just on fighter aircraft, they're on different planes. Um, it's a really neat system. Alright, so the plate has us over the FAF Mythic at uh, 1920 feet, so 1920 feet we should be crossing this waypoint, that means we're on the right profile. And our mins for the ILS, this is just a normal uh, category 1 are 650 feet. 200 AJL would be set in a radar altimeter if I could find out how to do it in this, but I don't know how to do it in this, so we're just gonna go in uh, this way. Our altimeter is showing standard 2992. I did hit B, so that must be just what the weather's actually 
at in this setting, in this preset that I made. And here we go. Yeah, the glide profile was pretty accurate. We're just uh, now through 1840 feet past Midic. We have no flags. 150 knots. It's looking good. The recommended um, touchdown speed is about 127, so I'm going to set this to around 135. Speed going down to 135 now. We're fully configured in the landing configuration. And uh, let's see how this plays out. Would suck if I get this far and crash. But I'm all ready to shut off my autopilot. Because I have my button set up already on my joystick, my autopilot will shut off the auto throttle and the autopilot itself. So there we go, we got some ground contact. We're still well above mins. Oh, I got the runway in sight over here. So this was easy. Uh, I'm not gonna turn my autopilot off until we hit mins just to show you where mins would be. If at minimums you don't see the runway in real life, you would, you would do a go around. In this case, runway heading and climb out to 3,000 feet. So, here we go. Yeah, I thought the weather would drop lower, or be lower. <laughs> this is almost VFR. Jeez. It's weird, because sometimes I'll come in with the same preset, and you can't see nothing. Even at mains, you get there, and you can't see, which is what I was hoping for with this video, but I'm not going to redo it for that sake. So, our glide slip's starting to slip away, but that's okay. We're... Approaching mins, we're just gonna make sure we don't get full deflection or we would bug out and go around. We're past our minimums, autopilot's disconnected, coming in for our touchdown. Things are looking good, runway's in sight. Try to keep it center line. I did uh, decrease my throttle to idle. There's our touchdown. I do find the rudders are really sensitive on a lot of the planes. Maybe it's just my own setup. Real life, I don't find the rudders on most planes are, are near as sensitive as these, but that's okay. It's good for practice. And there we go. We're down. That's, so that's how you do an ILS with autopilot in the DC Designs F14. And this is the A model. I hope that was helpful. Um, thanks for watching if you stuck it out this long. And uh, you'll see those annoying little flaps stay up when you land, so you can quickly oh, shut off the ILS systems here. Put that switch up, you'll see those flaps went away. You can put up your actual flaps themselves. If you lift this bar up, you're set to taxi. The wings will fold in, and you're good to go. All right. That's what I was hoping the weather would be like when we landed. Like to see this much, not as much as we did, but. Thanks for watching.